Um, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so I wanted to look at um, this whole process about developing black musicians. Um, and it's, it's really hard sometimes to separate what might be um, a cultural or a racial issue or what might actually be a class issue. Um, they're all kind of intertwined and really difficult to unpick. Um, so we were looking at the current landscape which shows that we've got a, a growing middle, a black middle class, um, who are all sending their, their children to music lessons, that they're all doing very well, though we're still not convinced that it's because necessarily because um, they feel some compulsion to develop artistic talent. Um, though what we've seen today, you know, clearly that many more of our young musicians um, are heading towards the profession. Um, there are more black people joining music schools, colleges and workshops, um, though there's still very much a shortage of black brass players. Um, I think Beverly noted that as well. Um, all the conservatoires, when I was doing a bit of research for a youth music application, I, I had a look online for the um, conservatoires' diversity policies. And there was a lot of interesting stuff happening there so they all have them but sort of variable robustness shall we say um most want to recruit and are actively trying to recruit um, more people from bme backgrounds and of course all the arts council funded organizations are required to produce and deliver to um, their diversity action plans and um looking sort of just surveying our scene in the jazz world um, since I started, uh, probably about 18, 19 years ago, um, but certainly over the last 20 or so years, and I think Gary will, will agree, that we do see more black musicians um, on the scene, um, but it does seem to be little pockets, and certainly Tomorrow's Warriors, I think, through the work we've done in um, positive action in bringing in black musicians has made a really big difference. I'm still very convinced though that if we weren't here we, it would be a very different story. You know, it's about taking your foot off the pedal um, and I don't think we can afford to do that. And um, looking at some of the barriers, we've got the real ones and the perceived ones and some of those get a bit blurred as well. Um, for a young black musician, we're, the feedback coming to us is that some of the um, national institutions might be slightly unwelcoming and make them feel uncomfortable because a lot of the time they're the only one in the room. Um, it's very cliquey and tokenistic um, and so as a black person they have no real sense of belonging within that peer group. Um, there's a the petty racism um, and excuses for not including people um, and I say that's a perceived barrier, not on the part of a, a black musician, but on the part of an institution. And um, I'm sure those people in the jazz world will know exactly who I'm talking about when I say that there was a comment that we don't have any black musicians in this jazz orchestra because black musicians can't read music. Um, so there's also a sense that we're tolerated and not appreciated. There's also, in terms of the, community, the black community, um, there's a, often a disconnect between um, the music um, as art and music as just something to be enjoyed. Um, real barriers can be lack of family support. Um, as a black, um, a young black person, you know, in a family of professionals, it's not necessarily seen as a great career move trying to be a professional musician. A lot of them want to see the children going to become doctors, lawyers, accountants, things that. But again, is that a black thing or is it a class thing? I'm not quite sure, it could be both. Um, there's a lack of established networks. I think Hassan touched on that as well. It's the old school tie thing, isn't it? So um, we don't necessarily have those as yet, but Tomorrow's Warriors is working very hard to, to build those networks. Um, there's the progression route, so we go to the music schools, and I think Beverly's research has um, confirmed this, that there's a, a lot of involvement um, at a young age 
but once we get through to the profession, there's a huge drop-off um, in the national orchestra. They're just not very visible. And I was just looking, the other day I was watching Top of the Pops, you know, from way back, and I remember as a child that when it came on, I think it was on a Thursday evening at seven o'clock or something, um, we would all rush in if there was a black musician on the telly, you know, and it was just something like, oh my God, there's a black musician. Um, and I was watching last night at the proms the other day, and it was, oh my God, there's a black musician there, you know, and it's not a singer, you know. So, in some respects, not much has really changed over, over time. Um, there's also this, um, the issue, and it is the elephant in the room, um, racism. It does exist, and it does exist in the arts. We can't pretend it doesn't. It is there, and you know, it needs to be talked about and dealt with. Um, so then looking at the untapped talent pool, uh, we need to see role models. We need to see positive role models, um, and that's in all, across, oops, across all genres as well. Um, we have more classically trained musicians coming through, but very few go on to work in the orchestras or top West End shows, um, unless it's jazz related or unless it's a visual aesthetic. I'm going to get the foot in a minute. Um, so we feel that you know there's a huge, um, highly skilled talent pool out there who's, who can help us. Um, the Black Lib organisations and all new organisations um, to build positive networks, supportive networks and for our art form to develop we need the, the musicians from the jazz and classical world to develop and grow together and inspire each other and um, I think that's really, really important. And one last thing, um, Hassan touched on um, the music and you know uh, becoming ossified and you know the music becoming heritage um, I, I fear very often that that's how a lot of people perceive jazz um, unfortunately and it might be um, part of the problem that there isn't enough diversity certainly in jazz and um, why um, audiences dying off and I think we need to, to take a look at that how diverse, diversifying the scene can help rebuild the audiences and make jazz more of a living music again. Thank you. Thank you.